Let's bring in Sky News host James Morrow, who joins us now. Great to catch up with you again, James. I couldn't believe that. The announcement at the press club, vapes will only be available at chemists. And yet I have the chemists on the show yesterday and we find out that they haven't even talked to them. Yeah, well, that's a bit of a mess there, uh, Steve. But I just think the whole vapes crackdown is really fascinating on so many levels. I mean, we know young people, especially, you know, always are on these vape things. You see them outside offices, restaurants, wherever. Uh, very popular with the younger demographic. These are the same people who voted in Labor and Anthony Albanese thinking, hey, we're going to have this hip, young, with it Labor government. And what's one of the first things they do here is they crack down on one of their preferred hobbies. Now, I don't really have, you know, a position one where the other on vapes, digital darts, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I do think it is fairly ironic that, uh, you know, they're going after one of the things that, they're, that their voters seem to enjoy. One of the interesting things, though, you know, bundled up in that announcement, which I think is behind all this, James, was the fact that they're going to actually, again, uh, raise the, uh, the tax on tobacco cigarettes. That's going to go up by another 5%. So that's going to help tip some more money into the budget. Yeah, and I mean, you know, at a certain point, you got to wonder uh, what's the point of that, because, you know, every day we read about various cigarette importation schemes, you know, chop, chop, all sorts of things like that. And, you know, so you're just creating a market for more underground tobacco, which, of course, is leaking tax. Um, they're also taxing things like cigars, which... Um, you know, we're hitting certain other people's <laughs> hip pockets fairly hard, you know, myself and Mr. Murray. Yes. Um, but, uh, but beyond that, though, you know, again, smoking is a thing that, you know, we know that, that people, you know, at the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum, uh, you know, engage in off, off lot. This does seem like kind of a bit of a regressive tax uh, on them as well. I just think that there's a certain point where taxing and banning things becomes too much of the Australian response to just about everything when a politician's looking for a headline. I nearly fell over the other day. I was standing behind a woman in a, a Woolies supermarket and she was buying a packet of Marlborough cigarettes, a uh, 25 packet of cigarettes. How much do you reckon that cost her? Oh, I don't know. They're re I know from people who smoke, they're 50, 60 bucks, something like that, yeah? Yeah, $25.50 for a packet. I mean, quite extraordinary. Now, you, uh, you're on page one of the Daily Telegraph today. Great story with the federal government's infrastructure razor gang targeting bridges and highways and train lines. Are they really going to blow up these projects, do you think? Well, we have a bit of form on this. I mean, we know that back in October, um, you know, they cancelled a bunch of projects here in New South Wales, including funding to help floodproof the Wakehurst Parkway in the northern beaches uh, and a whole lot of other projects. Now, you know, we know that they're probably not going to blow up big things like the metro and the fact that there's a, a Labor government here in New South Wales probably insulates some of these things. But the other interesting thing is, of course, that the things that they talked about funding in the election campaign, they're off limits. They're fine. So, you know, you got to wonder where, uh, you know, where it's going to hit. And I think there's going to be a lot of scrutiny when this review comes down in 90 days or 89 days now, um, you know, as to what seats these are coming down in, what projects where are being cut. But, you know, a lot of these things are very worthwhile. The things like, you know, road safety, road improvements, uh, highway extensions and things like that. At a time, of course, when we're bringing in more people and we need more infrastructure, Steve. Wouldn't you love to get politics out of infrastructure, James? I mean, yeah, they're crying wolf here. I mean, they're, they're saying that the, the previous mob, the coalition government under Scott Morrison, were pork barrelling every seat around the country and building, you know, can, can, uh, uh, car parks for people at train stations. And yet they're doing exactly the same thing. They're saying, oh, well, we promised all these things in these seats and we'll build them, but we won't build the others. Well, yeah, but I mean, look, at a certain point, though, you do have to say that we do want a system where there is ministerial discretion and where we don't leave everything off to the bureaucrats and the technocrats, because that way lies madness. But, you know, at the same time, you're right. You know, um, every party is probably guilty of this. But the thing the coalition says, I talked to them about this yesterday, you know, they said, well, we had this 10-year-long infrastructure pipeline because infrastructure takes a long time to build. People need to plan around it and around what's going to come. And there are a lot of uh, businesses and communities that plan around things happening that are now faced with a bit of uncertainty. Speaking about madness, I mean, I've uh, a couple of times been down and have a look at this drug injecting facility in suburban Melbourne in Richmond. It, they built it next to a primary school. Can you believe how dumb that is? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, they've now got overdoses. People are dying in school playgrounds. Uh, I went down there about a year ago and it took me five minutes to find a bloke about a block away shooting up in the gutter near that school. Uh, but it seems they're now going to leave this thing there 
regardless of what the local population say, they won't move it. They refuse to admit that they've made a mistake and they're even possibly going to put another one in the city. But wouldn't that be the worst piece of public policy you've ever heard of in your life, a drug, dr drug injecting facility next to a primary school? Well, I mean, it's just horrendous, and I can't imagine. I don't know how Dan Andrews, frankly, gets away with this sort of stuff. Because, of course, you know, this is just a real sort of pointy piece of, of, of policy that you see across the entire spectrum of socialist left policies, which is to punish normal people, middle class people, to say, you know, hey, screw you and your bourgeois lives. We're going to put an injecting room next to your school on the same street as your nice houses, and, and, and this is what you get for being normal, responsible people and paying your taxes. You get drug users nodding off outside your house. House, where your kids have to step over them to get to school. It is an absolute disgrace, and it is one of the many, many sins of the Andrews government. Absolutely stupid. I mean, when you look at the, the, uh, the drug facility in Sydney, uh, it's in Darlinghurst Road, the middle of the cross, at the grotty end of the cross. I mean, if you have to have one of these things, that's the sort of place you put it. But you don't put it in a suburb next to a house. I mean, I know Dan Andrews hasn't put it in his suburb, in his street. Yeah, no, and I mean, but the other thing, too, is, you know, the conversation that you got to have about hard drug use in this country, too. I mean, you know, you encourage what you want more of. And when you do something like this and you have a situation where there's a place where you say the law does not apply, uh, you know, because of, you know, out of the kindness of your heart, well, what are you doing? You're saying the law doesn't really apply anywhere or that it's very loose in a gray area. And, oh, you know, you've got troubles and that's why you're a drug addict. Well, you know, I'm sorry, like, countries that go really hard on this stuff don't have problems with injecting rooms next to schools. Yeah, and just finally, the Greens, by the way, what they want to do uh, is allow children to actually use that injecting facility. And when you're in there, it's not just heroin, you can actually take ice as well. It's just madness. James, always a pleasure to catch up with you, my friend. Talk again soon.